Welcome to the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, also known as the MWRD. The MWRD is the government agency responsible for treating wastewater and managing stormwater for the Chicago region, which means we clean sewage and work to reduce flooding. Even though we have the word water in our name, one thing we're not responsible for is drinking water. Most people in our service area get their water from the City of Chicago Department of Water Management. The MWRD was founded in 1889 to reverse the flow of the Chicago River to protect Lake Michigan and public health. We built 61 miles of canals, seven water reclamation plants, 110 miles of deep tunnels, and hundreds of miles of intercepting sewers that connect local sewers to our treatment facilities. We clean an average of 1.3 billion gallons of water every day, transforming wastewater, stormwater, and urban runoff into clean water while recovering valuable resources like energy and fertilizer. We continue to be a world-leading wastewater and stormwater management utility focused on flood mitigation, resource recovery, sustainability, resilience, and innovation. We hope you enjoy this brief overview of our treatment processes before you head out to see everything for yourself. Rain and dirty water from homes, businesses, and storm drains flows through sewers by gravity to our seven water reclamation plants. Each of our plants use similar processes to clean all that dirty water. Here's an example of an intake structure. This one is at the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant. The intake structure is the final destination for miles and miles of sewers, and it is about 45 feet underground. After the water arrives at the plant, we pump it up from sewer level to the surface so it can be cleaned. But before we let the water get to the pumps, we need to remove any large debris that could cause damage. To do this, we send it through core screens. These screens catch flushable wipes, litter, and leaves. Over the years, the screens have removed some interesting things, such as car wheels and bowling balls. Once we've screened out the large debris, the water continues onto the pumps. Here in the pump and blower building at the Stickney plant, you can see the pumps are well below ground level. They're down at the elevation of the sewers that are coming into the plant. These large boxes are soundproof enclosures that hold blowers, basically giant fans. Air is crucial for our treatment process. The blowers account for 50% of our energy use at the plants. After the water is pumped up to the surface, it flows through the rest of the plant by gravity, similar to a river. The first stop for the water after the pumps is our aerated grit tanks, where we use some of that air from the blowers to help rocks, sand, and gravel sink to the bottom. This debris goes to a dumpster and is sent to a landfill. Next, the water flows into what we call primary tanks. In primary tanks, we let the water sit very still. You can see these boards are moving very slowly across the surface of the water. They scrape anything that has floated to the surface, usually a mix of fats, oils, grease, and plastic, and slowly the system pushes this debris to the end of the tank, and then that material is disposed of in a dumpster. Meanwhile, underwater, the organic solids mixed with the wastewater are sinking to the bottom and those are removed and go through a separate solids process. We're actually able to remove 70 to 80% of the solids from the water in primary treatment. Notice how clear the water is here. And while you can definitely see there is some debris mixed in it, the water is already significantly cleaner. After primary treatment, the water flows on to secondary treatment. Secondary treatment consists of two parts secondary aeration tanks, and final settling tanks. The aeration tanks work just like a fish aquarium where air bubbles add dissolved oxygen to the water for the fish to breathe with their gills. In the case of our aeration tanks, we add dissolved oxygen to make the conditions just right for beneficial bacteria that help us clean the water. This carefully maintained population of microorganisms consumes the remaining solids and then clumps together to settle. After the aeration tanks, the water enters final settling tanks, where the clumps of bacteria sink to the bottom and clean water flows off the top. During warmer months when there is recreation on waterways, we disinfect water before we release it from several of our water reclamation plants. At the O'Brien plant in Skokie, we accomplish this by sending water through the super powerful ultraviolet light bulbs using 896 lamps that provide a low pressure, high output performance. The UV light deactivates any microbes left in the water so that they can no longer reproduce. At our Calumet plant, we accomplish the same thing using a chlorination-dechlorination process in which we add chlorine to the water and then send it through a maze-like contact structure and then chemically remove the chlorine before sending the water out into the Little Calumet River. 
What about the solids? The solids removed during treatment go to anaerobic digesters, where a different biological process breaks them down and produces biogas that we use to heat and cool our plants. After leaving the digesters, the solids are designated by the US EPA as biosolids and can be used as a soil amendment. These biosolids undergo additional processing to remove water. Centrifuges operate like a spin cycle of a washing machine. At other facilities, we air dry the solids. Just like the water we release from our plants, our biosolids are subject to strict standards for quality. They're continuously tested to confirm we're meeting those standards. So, we start with rain and dirty used water and end up with clean water and biosolids. And we achieve this using gravity, air, and helpful bacteria. Now it's time for you to see this amazing process for yourself. Enjoy the tour, be safe, and find out how you can help us succeed in our mission to protect our water environment.